The podcast you're about to hear is part of the Polish Scottish Heritage Project as one of its many productions which aim to promote a greater awareness of Poland and Scotland's shared heritage. We hope that it encourages you personally to look into the stories of the places, events and people that shape the history we are privileged to share. Well, if I could first ask you, Dr Kingsley, how did you first get involved with the Polish community and why? Well, as I say, it was a complete coincidence because I was living in London before coming home. I mean, I, I am a Londoner. I was doing my professional work in London and, amongst other things, teaching at the junior version of the Royal College of Music yes. in London. That meant roughly uh, boys and girls around the age of 9 to 12 or 13, that kind of thing. And uh, amongst my pupils there was a young girl of probably 12, I'm not sure what she was at the time, but she was saying, oh, you're going away, I'm sorry to hear that. And so on. I said, well, keep in touch. And she did. She came, she did keep in touch, and she came to do music as a career. She came up to Edinburgh and did her Bachelor of Music degree here, because I came to Edinburgh in order to teach at the University of Edinburgh in 1964. And this young lady, now at 18, came up and did her BMAS. I was one of her teachers, not the only one, of course. But I kept up her piano tuition, which was a private thing, just doing it in the university with her. And she got friendly with the people who, the family who lived in the house where Chopin stayed in uh, Warriston Crescent. And they already had concerts. They had a nice grand piano there, but they didn't have them with any system. They just had the odd one. And one day, apparently, she told me, she told the lady of the house, why don't you get my piano teacher to come and give you a concert? So they did. And that's how it started. Now that was about 1966. It wasn't absolutely as soon as I'd arrived. And uh, this recital I gave got me, they got interested, the Polish people then, who were not well, one or two of the people uh, are still there. Uh, Mrs. Brudzinska, you, I'm sure you know. Eventually, they started to float the idea of having a Chopin circle. Now, this was held in the house to begin with uh, of that, that family. The house was taken over by a lady who was still there. She was a retired member of the University of Edinburgh Library, the, the big main library. Miss Jane Kellett, who lives there now. And so we had a Chopin circle of Edinburgh. There was a very responsible gentleman, Polish, probably in his 60s, who got the whole thing going. But he was the mover of a Chopin circle of Edinburgh. I can't remember if he retired first or whether he passed away. I really can't remember. But when that happened, I was invited to become the the principal of it, but not the outright president. The outright president was a very famous Polish violinist at that time. That was the beginning of it all. We'd have a concert about three times a year in Miss Kellett's house, because she had a very wonderful piano, dating back to the sort of time when Chopin might have played on it, but we don't know at all if he did. She eventually said, well, I, I really think I'd like this to stop. I'm getting older and she's got a house with a very large staircase leading up. And she was beginning to find trouble in that respect. So we had to stop. That was in 1993. I thought, it's a pity to give this right up. So I got together with uh, Mrs. Brzezinska and, and uh, one or two other people we started up about four years ago. I gave two concerts at first in the house where a Catholic priest is resident and there is a, 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 a small um, room down beside uh, in, in that house and that's in Belford Park near the modern art galleries. So we started to have one or two concerts there. I, I, I gave the first two concerts at the Chopin Circle, no longer of Edinburgh, but the Chopin Circle in Scotland. We always started with ambitions to 
spread it much more and we are doing so four years on or four and what do you think is important about his music why have you always loved him how oh, well the point is he uh, was so talented coming through the warsaw conservatory which was still there in his day i mean after all don't forget he was born in 1810 i mean this is he probably started in it about 1813 i don't know the right year but when he got to about 16 17 the principal of that academy said we have nothing to teach this young man he is reinventing piano playing and of course not only playing superbly but beginning to improvise brilliantly and put down a few works on paper there's a bit of a story behind that because um, Chopin was a very nervous character and he didn't always keep his uh, arrangements in the best order and somebody came down from Poland who had been uh, a Warsaw I think I'm right in saying a Warsaw Academy um, mate of Chopin's they were, they were there together um, who was very good at arranging things and they had a rather extraordinary experience because this man's son handwriting in music was almost exactly the same as Chopin's so much so that nobody could tell the difference not even Chopin's sister it's just an extraordinary coincidence about his music handwriting not his other handwriting well Chopin wrote some very very early works there's a, there's a little um, polonaise when he was eight well it's a, a very lovely little piece for a, a, an eight-year-old and there were other juvenile works his earliest opus numbers come at about age 18, 19 and he didn't want these other childhood works to be published. Unfortunately the other man waited until Chopin had passed away and then he published the lot and they're all in various books of the famous Henley edition which is the great German edition where they reckon they've really got the best manuscripts and early um, editions to hand so there is a complete set of all those things starting with the little works he wrote in eight and nine that kind of thing Chopin didn't want them published he thought he, he didn't want to be re represented by that as a, like a freak but I'm afraid he, that's what happened so all those pieces are uh, available very quickly he got into writing extremely passable music but they were still not quite what he wanted to publish the music he wrote around about sort of 14 onwards to about 18 of course he'd started writing his famous studies by the age of 18 the uh, the early pieces are already very public very interesting and it's rather interesting why they are all polonaises because there was in Chopin's circle of his family and so on a very clever amateur pianist whose name was I think Wojcinski I hope I'm right who could sit down at a piano and improvised a, a whole polonaise just like that he was an amateur pianist not a, he, his, his real work was something else and that of course was the great influence on the young Chopin the very young Chopin so all his early pieces are polonaises and then when you get to his age about 17 you've got works that he did accept and allowed to be published there, there's still there's still a good reason I think why there are so many polonaises in his output they're very much more advanced and much more mature sounding pieces I mustn't say mature because he was still only about 20 but well in, in terms of composition he was mature he was, he was producing beautifully molded and shaped works as, as well as this marvelous way he had of approaching the piano which the Warsaw, Warsaw Academy or whatever its proper name is just said well we can't teach him anything he knows it all in fact he knows he knows more than us well that was true he, he, he was absolutely renewing piano playing and of course the contemporary pianists had to try and catch up one or two of them didn't it was a famous pianist called Ignaz Moscheles, 
who was, well he was rather the um, old school at the piano where the fingers are very sort of like, like, like little hammers and he said this music can't be played it's, it's not it's not good piano music well he was big enough to take it all back later on and he became one of Chopin's enthusiasts he was a very fine pianist and I think he may have managed to alter his own style of uh, technique of piano playing so that he began to be able to do what Chopin had written Chopin from all the pictures of it you see the, the hand much more flat looking on the keyboard but still that that was Chopin's contribution was enormous because using the wooden piano everywhere wherever he, he only really played in Poland and down in Europe his uh, his, his stay in, in Paris which began when he was age 20 and he never came back to Poland but um, he wrote a lot of his stuff there and one or two things he was able to play when he visited Biela which he did twice first time when he was about 17 he and some friends went their parents sent them off and let them do it the next time was when he was about 20 21 and then unfortunately the, <laughs> the, the, the scene of politics had horribly changed and uh, Prince Metternich was not a friend of the Poles and poor, Sh poor Chopin lost all his rather rather fine contacts of, of, of society and so on so the second time he was there he was a bit more on his own but as I say he gradually came back to France and that was France was mainly his home of course he was half French his father was French as we all know so um, he lived out the rest of his life at sadly early age of 39 uh, writing more and more mature works and rather difficult ones in fact the the, the the temporary audiences the contemporary audiences of his time began to say the last works were a bit cerebral well nobody believes that now but the point is his his finding of harmony and style and, and form and so on were right away from Beethoven Schumann kind of thing it's, it's, it's very true that the later works on the whole are less played the very late works and can I ask have your links with Chopin led you to have links with Poland well I have not well I have now I'm going out to a, a wedding in June actually um, I have been to Poland twice. I was invited to go as one of the guests of honour by the Chopin, Circle, the Chopin Society in Warsaw to go to the um, 1975 Chopin competition, international competition. So I went and heard those. And then I was asked by a Polish couple, a flautist and pianist, who I think may be coming to the end of their, pupil, their, their careers now. But I don't, we haven't heard them in, in written so much lately but they were quite often coming over here oh 20 and 25 and 30 years ago and they invited me to go out to Tarnów which is really I thought like a rather uh, sort of miniature Krakow to do my professional things unfortunately the pianist of these ladies when I didn't know a word of Polish well I still don't know much was brilliant in English so I didn't even need to give her scripts she just sat beside me and everything I said she translated I was doing certain things like making known some of the English composers of the roughly early 20th century mostly and uh, in other words playing works that my audience had never heard because they were basically an audience of piano teachers and, uh, and professional musicians in town of so um, I did that. Well, uh, my, my um, works with the Polish community bore a very happy fruit, which I, I feel that I have to be modest to even mention it, but they, they gave me um, the, the, the Polish uh, Bologna Restituta about 30, 35 years ago. You see, I used to join with the um, all male voice choir of the people who had come to the Polish people who had come to fight on our side in World War Two, and a lot of them stayed on 
married later on, and um, they had they had a choir called the Echo Choir. My father was in it. Oh, was he? Well, then I met him because <laughs> I used to play a lot. Or I wasn't their regular pianist, but uh, we did uh, something every year. We go out for November the eleventh to St Andrews and use the University Big Hall, and there was a very big selection of Polish culture. I played a certain amount, but nothing like all of it. Uh, oh, they had soldiers in uniform on the platform and all that sort of thing. But I did that year after year, until it eventually stopped, because the choir were getting older, and it, it disbanded. And um, it was, I think it was really, because I was so willing to, to go along with this, this post-war effort of the Poles on our side, which is possibly why they gave me that, that, uh, that medal, which of course I think Polish people on the whole are very proud of the medals and on, on big occasions one usually sees them out in force, so I have mine, I put it on when necessary. I don't want to put it on at the wrong time, that would be rather unfortunate. And can I ask, how long have you been president of the Scottish Polish Society? Well, ever since it started, no, not ever since it started, but a good, I should think most of 20 years. Well, it was, it was Mrs. Brudzinska who, who simply said, you know, we'd like you to be president. I don't actually have very much to do, unless it's got to do with music. This project would not have been possible without the support of our sponsors, including the Consulate General of the Republic of Poland in Edinburgh, and the enthusiasm and hard work of our project volunteers, for which we are extremely grateful.